So in A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones, Westeros is divided by a big icy wall. To its south are the Seven Kingdoms, with all its cities and castles and ladies and lords and almost all the main characters in the series. North of the wall is a vast frozen wilderness, populated by people known as the Wildlings. The Wildlings are in trouble, because recently they've been under attack from the mysterious Others, or White Walkers. Mance Raider, the king beyond the wall who unites and leads the Wildlings, tries to fight the White Walkers at first, but he can't stand against them, so instead he decides to lead his people to safety south of the wall. But the Night's Watch who man the wall see the Wildlings as enemies, as dangerous savages, and they don't want to let them through. So Mance, determined to get his people south, prepares to do something drastic. He searches for an ancient artifact said to have the power to break the wall, something called Joraman's Horn, or the Horn of Winter. Mance searches for the horn in the frost fangs and all over the valley of the milk water, digging up half a hundred graves of ancient kings and heroes. Ygritte tells Jon that for all their searching, the wildlings never find the horn, but later in Storm, Mance says that Ygritte lied and that he did find it. He shows Jon a great war horn, eight feet long, banded in gold and engraved with runes. Mance says that unless the watch lets the wildlings through the wall, he'll blow the horn and destroy the wall, even though he knows that if the wall falls, there'll be nothing to stop the others. In the end, Stannis captures Mance and Melisandre burns the horn, and Jon lets many of the wildlings through the wall anyway, so it looks like the story of the horn is cut short. But later, Tormund tells Jon that Mansa's horn wasn't actually the real horn, that it was an empty threat. So Jon asks, if Mansa's horn was just a feint, where is the true horn? We might also ask what the horn actually does exactly, and who made it, and why. We're never directly given answers to these questions in the text, but we can make some pretty good guesses. Let's start at the beginning, with Joraman. According to legend, Joraman was the first king beyond the wall, the first person to unite and lead the wildlings. He lived thousands of years ago, so we don't really know anything about him for certain, but we hear a few different stories. Jill Mormont implies that Joraman tried to invade the south, but was defeated, either by the wall or by the Starks of Winterfell. In another story, Joraman apparently fought alongside the Starks in the overthrow of the Night's King, a lord commander of the Night's Watch who seemed to be involved with the Others. But the main thing we're told about Joraman is that he blew the Horn of Winter and woke giants from the earth, which apparently means the Horn has the power to bring down the wall. So these legends raise a lot of questions, like if blowing the Horn of Winter brings down the wall and Joraman blew the Horn of Winter, why is the wall still standing? Was the Horn not used to its full power or maybe not directed at the wall or something? And did Joraman try to invade the south or did he fight with the Starks against the Night's King or both? Was the horn used in these conflicts? And most of all, what does it mean to wake giants from the earth? Fans have lots of different ideas about what this phrase means. Like, maybe it's literal. Maybe there are giants in some kind of hibernation under the ground and the sound of the horn will wake them and make them tear down the wall. Some suggest that there are ice dragons frozen within the wall or huge weirwood trees that could be described as giants. But there's evidence for a different explanation in the world of ice and fire, in the bit about the breaking of the arm of dawn. Basically, thousands of years ago, the first humans came to Westeros across a land bridge called the Arm of Dawn. They started warring with the children of the forest, so to try to stop more humans coming, the children used the magic of the old gods to break the arm. The old gods stirred, and giants awoke in the earth, and all of Westeros shook and trembled. Great cracks appeared in the earth, and hills and mountains collapsed and were swallowed up, and then the seas came rushing in, and the Arm of Dawn was broken, leaving only the few bare rocky islands that we see today. So George R. R. Martin uses waking giants from the earth as a metaphor for a huge earth-shaking cataclysm. Presumably, that's what the Horn of Winter does, and that's how it could destroy the wall. This may also hint at the Horn's origins. It sounds like the Horn uses the magic of the children of the forest. But the physical form of the Horn itself seems like something humans would make, especially if it's banded in metal, which we know the children didn't use. So maybe the Horn was made by the children of the forest and the first men working together, which makes sense, because the horn dates back to a time of friendship and peace between the children and the men. In fact, it was not long before Joraman that the children and the men apparently worked together to defeat the others and build the wall. Which raises another question. Why would the children and the men make a horn that can destroy the wall just after they built the wall? Maybe this supports the theory that the wall was actually built by the others. But if the children and the men actually wanted to destroy the wall, why put that power into a horn instead of just using that power and destroying the wall right away? Maybe the horn was designed not to destroy the wall, 
but as a power play to show that you could bring down the wall, kind of like nukes in the Cold War. Being able to threaten someone with complete destruction can be more powerful than actually destroying them. This is what Matt's Raider does in Storm, right? He doesn't want to use the horn to bring down the wall because he knows that that would make everyone vulnerable to the others, but he threatens to do it anyway to force the Watch to do what he wants. Maybe that's why the horn was made in the first place, not to destroy the wall, but as a way to project power by showing you could destroy the wall. It might have been first used against the Night's King. The Night's King apparently took over the Night's Watch and the wall with strange sorceries and made sacrifices to the others. Maybe the way the Wildlings and Starks defeated him was by threatening to use the horn. Maybe Joraman sounded it at less than its full power, enough to show that he could destroy the wall without actually doing it, in doing so forcing the Night's King to stand down. That's just a guess, there's no solid evidence to support this, but it does make sense for the horn to be designed more as a threat than to be actually used. To speculate a little more, we can also guess at where the horn was kept after the business with Joraman and the Night's King. Maybe the Horn of Winter was held by the Stark Kings of Winter at Winterfell. Maybe that's why it said that there must always be a Stark in Winterfell. The Starks historically guarded the Horn. Maybe the Horn was kept in the Winterfell crypts. There are lots of hints that there's something important down there. Both Bran and Jon have many dreams about the crypts. Also, Mance Raider has shown a suspicious interest in the crypts. He actually infiltrates Winterfell twice. In the first book and in Dance, Mance is still alive in the books. In Dance, Mance gets into Winterfell and tries to find out from Theon where the crypts are. Is it possible that Mance believes that the Horn of Winter is in the crypts? Is that why he keeps on sneaking into Winterfell? Maybe we'll find out in the next book. But it's also possible that the Horn's not in Winterfell anymore, if it ever was, because it seems likely that the Horn of Winter is now in the possession of Samwell Tarly. In Clash, Jon finds a cache of dragonglass weapons, wrapped in a Night's Watch cloak and buried on the Fist of the First Men, possibly by Benjen or Cold Hands for Bloodraven. Along with the dragonglass daggers and arrowheads is an old warhorn, made from an aurochs horn and banded in bronze. It's cracked and chipped and John can't get any sound from it, so he gives it to Sam, who likes old things, even worthless old things. Basically this horn doesn't seem to be important, but Sam hangs on to it and the books keep subtly reminding us that he still has it. Four times in two books the horn is offhandedly mentioned, often right after John chapters where he mentions the Horn of Winter. Why would this horn keep coming up unless it was important? It looks like George Martin is setting us up to reveal that Sam's worthless old horn is actually the legendary Horn of Winter. Which could lead to some pretty crazy shit happening. Like, what would happen if Sam repairs and blows the horn while he's in Old Town? Would the wall suddenly fall hundreds of miles away? Or if the horn is, like, directional, would Old Town collapse around Sam? It's also worth considering that magic in this story, especially the magic of the old gods, often has a cost of blood or human life. When someone uses another magic horn in the story, Dragonbinder, his lips blister and his chest bleeds and he ends up dead. Whoever uses Joraman's horn might suffer something similar. There is an interesting symmetry between the fiery Dragonbinder and the icy horn of winter. Also, there's apparently a magic horn that summons krakens from the deep, which sounds pretty sick. But anyway, we could speculate all day about Joraman's horn, but here's our best guesses based on what we know now. According to legend, it's an ancient horn with the power to bring down the wall. It was probably originally made by the children of the forest and the first men, maybe not because they wanted to destroy the wall, but because they wanted to be able to threaten to destroy it, like a mutually assured destruction type deal. After Joraman and the Night's King, the horn may have been kept by the Starks in the Winterfell crypts, though now it seems likely that the horn is held by Samwell Tarly in the Citadel, which could have hilarious and or disastrous consequences. We'll hopefully learn more about the horn in the next book. It's apparently on the cover after all. Until then, we'll keep on guessing. Thanks for watching. For more Game of Thrones discussion and analysis, you might like to check out the Song of Ice and Fire subreddit and westeros.org. Many thanks to all the patrons, including Xandria Leonard, Mr. Fifa SA, Cameron Weiss, Vanyard Dog, Michael Lapel, Yad Aliqui, Matthew Elisha Williams, Fred Petty, Andrew Noonan, David McNamee, John Dykes, Ruby Goodnight, Jenny Alvarado, and Nicole Killian. Feel free to like and subscribe and comment below what you'd like to see next. Cheers.